loads of personality really. Really, good at this. Uh, I love, I love this shit. (laughs) We want to inspire everyone to be in rude health. That's what we're trying to do. That's sort of what Rude Health is, what it stands for. Um, In terms of how we do that, what we do is we make nourishing food. That's it, really. There's obviously a lot more to it day to day. You feel like you could do that with two people in a kitchen, but there's, there's a lot more behind it. Our first, the first thing we made was a muesli called the ultimate muesli. And all we did was, I mean, a muesli is a relatively simple thing to start with because all you've got to do is come up with a recipe by the ingredients and mix them up. So we, without knowing, we had started with something relatively straightforward. So we just made what we thought was the ultimate muesli. Most mueslis had six, nine ingredients in them. So we threw 24 at it, um, and include, including blueberries and goji berries and cranberries and four different types of nuts and you know just everything in there. But the idea was that each mouthful was going to be interesting. You weren't ever going to get a mouthful and go, kind of, I'm eating a rabbit cage floor here. Um, so all we had to buy was 24, 24 ingredients and play with them and make it more and more exciting. Uh, and then. We decided to stick it in a tub because we thought we're so proud of it we want you to be able to see it so it was a clear plastic tub got some stickers made using a friend um, of my husband's who he'd worked with before uh, and then took it round to the local deli that 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 was the business plan done luckily they bought it otherwise that would have been it that would have been the end so it was a really simple concept it was just cereals that were nourishing and tasty and then we got overexcited quite quickly and moved out of cereals when we barely had a toehold in cereals moved into snacks a bit like rice cakes but less like a um, like ceiling tile thinner and crispier um, and then we got overexcited again and we moved into um, dairy free drinks also grain based that was our loose you know how do you justify this they're all grain based um, and we we haven't we're still planning on we're going into whole so we've done breakfast cereals some savory snacks dairy free drinks and we've got more to come haven't finished yet so the cafe a cafe we love it's such fun completely different business so obviously after 10 years we'd sort of got our heads around most of running a business so we decided to do a business that we knew nothing about again um, simply because the space was there it was on no business plan ever but we needed to move offices we, we had sort of 12 people in a six person office and were literally tripping over things uh, and then we just across the road we, we found this space but it was too big we thought actually it wasn't but at the time we thought it was too big and some um, inspired person said but that front bit would make a great cafe and um, we all went what an amazing opportunity. So we did, uh, and it has been great, and it is great, and it is a completely different business from running a food brand, but it's lovely, you know, you invite people there, because inviting people to an office is just not fun, but inviting people to a cafe is, is wonderful, and you can showcase the things that you can't, we can't make, you know, that, but we can make them, we, all the live foods, you know, we can experiment, we can have fun, um, and talk to the customers. Passion. I think passion. We did when we used to we used to do a lot of ranting, and someone actually did a rant about how how overused the word passion is in particularly food startup businesses. Of course, we're all passionate. We wouldn't be doing it otherwise. Yeah. Uh, it used to be how slowly everything went. It was you, know, you start the business, you know exactly what why you've done what you've done but it takes years for anybody else to really get it what did for us maybe it doesn't but it did for us now it's it's going now it's slightly running away with itself (laughs) biggest i think biggest win as a business is when we get called by you know a big buyer at the supermarket or something we get called by them and they want something from, and they've thought of us. It's such a reversal of the position even five years ago, where you'd be a big win would have been getting and getting someone to answer the phone. 
sort of significant customer you might know of uh, was Fresh and Wild, as was then, is now Whole Foods, and around the same time also Riverford. They were our first pallet delivery. That was so exciting, we hired a van and took the pallet down there ourselves. Oh, I think we probably did it sale or return. I think it probably wasn't even a proper order. I mean, it will have been one case which probably had 12 pots of muesli in with a retail of six pounds. So I don't know what we'd have sold them in for, what, four pounds each? Four to about 48 quid probably, something like that. I think the thing, the thing that we did first was done completely by accident. Actually, that's quite a consistent story of quite a lot of what we've done, so it was completely by accident. Uh, was my husband rants uh, about a lot of things um, to whoever will, will listen. Um, and it was while we were having a, a website built um, that uh, he'd obviously ranted about something, probably milk or um, something along those lines, to the web designer who said, have you thought about putting these online? And everyone else went, yes, get them online. Um, so the ranting started, put it online. Other people wanted to put their rants online. And then we wanted to do it live, um, involving, the idea was give small producers a voice. You know, get, everyone has, and we discovered everyone has their rant. Everyone has a rant in them. Well, lots of people um, and Abergavenny Food Festival uh, invited us we they, they got it when we said we want to do this thing where we ran, everyone rants and they went oh like a foodies speakers corner we're like yes that's exactly it um, and we, we did that for 10 years it was brilliant it was it was brand build it it was incredibly good networking without us trying to um, and we learned an enormous amount and it gave us an extraordinary tone of voice that you couldn't make up uh, it, yeah, it was, it was really successful and enormously good fun. Well, we live in London, so uh, it, was, it was never a question uh, where we were going to be based. It is easier because we're, you've got the most dense population and the trendiest bit of uh, the UK on your doorstep and you're plugged into it. Um, we'd be doing an awful lot of driving around not just to buyers meetings but to find out what's going on. I think the food shops are so important, you know, to be able to pop into Whole Foods and see what's new um, is, is huge as a really tiny thing. But so much of what gets to the rest of the country has started in London. I think we'd be one step behind and our whole thing is about moving health food on. So we need to be doing it first. So for us, I think it's absolutely crucial that we're in London. I'm not a finisher. I love ideas. I love getting things off the ground. And once they're vaguely up and running, then that's fine. That's absolutely great. I'm on to the next thing. In a weird way, I don't give up. It's a weird way though, because I, I go through, I do give up. I get completely overwhelmed. You know, that if you do the Myers-Briggs thing and you, whatever, I'm the balloon, so. If I get bad news, that's it. It's a disaster. It's a complete disaster. Um, whereas if you're the other type of person, it's just one brick out of the wall. So I go complete disaster, but, but I don't act. I, come, I keep coming back at it slowly. So in a very odd way, I don't give up. Yeah. Is that a big strength? Like, God, that's terrible. It's a terrible big strength. I'm, I'll think of a better one for next time. probably wouldn't start a business at the same time as having two children. Um, that's quite a lot. And with your husband, with, you know, that, that's quite, that was quite full on. Um, quite full on, quite a long time. I can't really remember the first few years. It's just blur. Change that. Don't know how. Change that. Yeah, what we've found with people is the culture is absolutely number one. All our recruitment fails have been when it culturally doesn't fit every single time and we haven't done it for a while now I think we've I think we've learned that lesson um, and we can now there it does what where we used to fail was trying to bring people from really big business into us and we've actually done that successfully now but there it has to, there's a sort of certain flip that, that has to want to be made so I think there is we also we have an established culture for the first few years it's a bit fluid but yes we, we, it is culturally almost more important than 
skills. Well, I'd like the whole world to enjoy eating.